Alright, so today I'd like to show you how I customize my KDE Plasma desktop. Uh, for this video, I will be using Kubuntu 22.04 LTS. And however, if you're using something else, something more vanilla like Fedora or OpenSUSE or Debian, this should be the same or be slightly similar. However, if you're using something that's a little bit more customized out of the box like Garuda Linux or maybe even Manjaro. I don't think Manjaro is slightly more vanilla-ish. This might not, you know, track or be the same, but you know, you could still follow along if you want. So yeah, let's get started. So one of the first things I like to do personally is I like to streak my panel. I like to make it smaller. And to do that, I just right click on the panel uh, hit enter click enter edit mode which will take you to the edit mode interface or whatever from there you just want to go to panel height and hit the minus button I like to have my panel at 36 pixels so that's what I'll be doing and uh, while I'm here while I'm in the edit mode interface you could uh, you know hover over any of your any of your applets and you could remove them or configure them or switch them for similar applets if you so desire. So I like to switch my icons only task manager to the normal task manager. Uh, this is just because I like to have my labels shown on the running apps that I have running. <laughs> and in order to you know exit the edit mode interface, you just have to click this red X at the top middle here and you'll exit edit mode. So I personally just like to remove all my pinned apps, but you don't have to do it. I know not a lot of people like to do this because they like to have their apps easily readily available and that's fine. This is just something that I do because I'm weird. So now that we've done that, let's just open up a web browser and let's download some of the things that we'll be needing. So for this, I like to go over to the KDE store. Just go on over to store.kde.org. And yeah, you'll be taken to a place where you could, you know, download a bunch of uh, third party applets. Do keep in mind that these are third party. They are not official, you know, Plasma applets. So just exercise caution, I guess. <laughs> when downloading these so there are two applets that we want we want the overview applet so just uh, there's a very small search widget on the top middle here you can barely even see it but just if you click on it you could search in the website for for stuff and you just click on the little pop-ups that pop up when you search and want to download it I've already downloaded it and I put it in a folder so I could have everything sort of centralized the other thing that I like to download is the latte separator and I'll show you what these do later so just click download and download that so the next thing that I like to download is the win 10 OS cursors which will give me mouse cursors that look you know like this <laughs> I like the way they look, so I just download them. Next, we'll be downloading the Windows 11 dark color theme. Yeah, that should be about it. Now we could exit from the browser, open up our file manager. I have all my stuff in one folder. Uh, here we go and we're just gonna you know extract the archive that we just downloaded we do not need to uh, extract the Windows 10 cursors we just need to extract the the color scheme so in order to do that you right click you go to extract extract archive here or ar extract archive auto detect subfolder I like to do the auto detect subfolder in case there are subfolders like so. So now we have all our things that we need. 
So I think first I'll customize the theme and then I'll customize the way that Plasma works. Let's go over to system settings, go over to the appearance tab, go over to plasma style. I like to use the breeze theme because it inherits the colors from your color scheme, which is what this color wheel on the top right represents. So just click on it and click apply and it should switch your plasma theme. Now go over to the colors tab and click install from file. This should open up a temporary file manager. Go over to where you have your things and select your colors, your dot colors color scheme and just hit open and it should appear on, on your settings. Now what you wanna do is you wanna edit it and to do that, you could hit the little pencil icon that says edit color scheme just click on that so for my window background I like to have it at 1A 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 the reason for this is because virtual box looks really weird with anything darker than 1A 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 I've tried it and it just looks weird when you open it so this is the darkest you could get if you want a dark theme for you know virtual box not to look really weird so yeah. For my view background, I like to have it slightly darker than my window background, so maybe like one, 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 four, six ones will do the trick, or one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Uh, just eyeball it, and it should look good. For my uh, text, I like to have it be white text. For my view text, my window text, I like to have it white as well. For my button background, I like to have it slightly lighter than my window background, so maybe 23, 23, 23. We'll just leave the button text as is. We'll just leave everything, almost everything else as is, except for the active title bar. The active title bar will be the same color as my window background. The active title bar text will be white as well. The inactive title bar, I like to have it slightly darker than my window background. The reason for that is I want it to contrast between inactive windows and active windows so I don't get them mixed up. So in other words, windows that are running and windows that are in the background. I like to have my text be way darker than the normal text so that I can tell them apart. And now we'll just save as and name it whatever you want. So win 11 edit. And now we shall have an edited version of the normal color scheme. Click apply and all your colors should be applied. One thing that I did forget to do that I'll do later is, you know, download a wallpaper. Next we'll change the icon. So go to the icons panel and change it to breeze dark since we're using a dark theme and we'll go over to the cursors panel or the cursors tab click on install from file go to where you have your things and just double click on your cursors tar file click apply now in order to change it completely as you could see that it changes when i you know switch from the desktop to the window in order to change it completely, all you have to do is log out and log back in. That's fine, we'll be doing that later. So just keep that in mind. So now that we've done all of that, let's go to the Plasma panel again. So we'll right click, enter edit mode again. We're going to want to add the widgets that we downloaded. We'll go over to add widgets and that'll take you to a panel here. I've already went ahead and installed them but in order to install them it's not really hard you just go over to get new widgets from the panel on the left install widget from local file which will open up a file manager and all you have to do is click on whatever widget or applet you've downloaded or you want to install and just click finish and that'll install your applet so i've already gone and installed both of them and we'll be using them now so i like to put 
a latte separator in two places. One is here on the on the left, right by the start button or the application kickoff button, you know, whatever Plasma likes to call it. And then I like to drag one over here on the very, very, very right. Now let's put our overview applet right here, right next to the to the application kickoff button. I like to drag over my minimize all windows button all the way to the to the very left. Now it should look like this. So what the latte separator does is, you know, basically self-explanatory. It's a separator. It separates different applets from each other, and you could configure it by right-clicking on it and going to configure, you know, latte separator, whatever widget really. You can configure any widget like that. You know, given that they are configurable, some are, some aren't. So we could edit its length. I'll show you what that does. It'll make it longer and making it, you know, shorter will make it shorter. So yeah, the thickness is just how long the, the little bar is. So I'll show you, you could make it smaller. You see right there, it's just a little dot. <laughs> You can make it almost as tall as the panel if you hit zero pixels. I like to have mine at two pixels for the length and eight pixels for the thickness. The one on the very right, I like to have at one for the length and an absurd number for the thickness so I can make it disappear or look like it disappeared. <laughs> so you could see that it gives gives a little bit of cushion room between the clock and the edge of my screen. I don't like having my clock way at the edge of my screen. It looks weird <laughs> to me personally. So that's why I use the latte separator applet. So now to configure the overview applet, just right click on it, configure overview, and we're going to just choose a different icon that more accurately represents what it does. So what you'll do is click on the icon, click choose, uh, right here on the application, where it says applications on the top left. You click on it, you'll get a drop down. Go to actions, and I like to search for virtual desktops, and just hit okay, click apply, and I think that more accurately represents what it's supposed to do, which is to show you a overview of your running windows and your desktops. For example, let's open it something up and from this overview pane or whatever, you could add more desktops or remove your desktops that you've just added. You could add as many as you want. You can also search for things like Let's see, Dolphin, you know, it'll also search, it'll search your, the application that you have installed, it'll search your system settings, and it'll search your open windows. It'll probably search files too, but I'm not sure. The last thing that I do, that I forgot to do, is to download a wallpaper. So we're going to download the wallpaper, go to wallhaven.cc. And I like downloading Windows 11-ish wallpaper. And you can download whatever wallpaper you want. So I really like this one, so I'll click on it. Open image is a new tab. I notice that it's a JPEG image, so we're gonna change that. Save it to my pictures folder. So for the other thing that I forgot is, you know, let's right click on the panel. First of all, let's remove the pager there'll be a rectangle that appears just hover over it and remove it and the next thing that we're going to do is go to more options and make the panel always be translucent you can make the panel be adaptive which will be translucent when files are not maximized and it will be opaque when apps are maximized opaque will just keep it opaque all the time and translucent will keep it translucent all the time I like to have it translucent all the time. This is a JPEG, so we're just gonna wanna open it with Gwenview. We're gonna wanna save it as a PNG, so just click on the right-hand side, click Save As, 
and then just uh, scroll down here to PNG and just save. The reason that I want to save it as a PNG is because JPEGs usually look kind of blurry whenever you have them as wallpapers. So in order to set something as a wallpaper, just right click on it, set as wallpaper, easy as that. Now for the final thing that we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to change our color and that should be easy with the new plasma sort of feature that they give you which lets you just customize your accent color so in order to do that just just uh, where it says use accent color just click on the radio button below from current color scheme and uh, click on custom the eyedropper Pick screen color and just pick a color from from the wallpaper. Click apply, like so, and now you have a color scheme that matches your wallpaper. So yeah, that's how I personally like to customize my Plasma desktop. So if you like this video, leave a like. If not, dislike it. See you on the next video. Peace.